Stand by to receive our transmission. Where are you boys from in the world? Alabama, sir. I got a bad feeling about this. Welcome to the Bama Geeks Podcast. We are four friends diving into our favorite pop culture topics with a dash of Southern charm. Right, we have the tools, we have the power. It's Miller time. Whoa, this is heavy. Pizza dude's got 30 seconds. Wait, what? Crazy? You didn't say I was crazy. You got the wrong guy. I'm the dude, man. You want something done, you've got to do it yourself. Be excellent to each other. Party on, dudes! So grab your biscuits and gravy, a glass of sweet tea, and enjoy the nerdy hospitality of Brock and Jessica Parker, Bo Bearden, and Kevin Gardner. This is the way. This is the way. Episode 14 of the Bama Geeks podcast. Hello, hello. I'm Brock Parker. Thank you so much for joining us. Did we skip over episode 13? The answer is no. We gave it to you. It just wasn't us. We'll talk about it. Not a lot because it's already out there. Who needs to talk about it? <laughs> Hope you're doing well. We are fresh uh, off of Dragon Con and just good things in life. So my family is with me, my friends. Introduce yourselves, please. Hi, I'm Jessica. I'm back. I have a voice now. Woohoo! Woohoo! And there's I, Bo. They still let me keep coming. I don't know why, but they do. Hey, guys, it's Kevin. <laughs> Bo said it keeps uh, it got it got all star in my brain and the bow keeps coming and he don't stop. Coming. Oh, that's good. <laughs> hey, <Yes. laughs> what are you doing in my podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Get out. <laughs> He's making waffles in case you can't see him. So, uh, yeah, it's it's been a month since we have all sat down together and uh, and recorded an episode. But uh, the episode 13 we wanted to give you a little something unique. We went back in the archives from our Alabama Ghostbusters podcast, and we found, coincidentally, episode number 13, which was the uh, panel at Alabama Phoenix Festival. If you haven't listened to that, find it in your feed. Go back and listen to it. Ernie Hudson and Robin Shelby was a part of it, and we had a great time. We absolutely miss Alabama Phoenix Festival. Mm, and very much that, so. That was such a good con, and it was only around for three years. And uh, fingers crossed that maybe one day we can get Tim and Steve and Stan to renew it. But might be a while. You've know, <laughs> always had really good things to say about that convention. I've, I've been hearing from y'all for yeah, quite you, some time now. Hate you missed that one. That was that was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alabama Ghostbusters was a huge part of all three years of those. So a lot of fun. But uh, go catch that. And before we jump into everything, make sure you hit us up on our social media at Bama Geeks, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Find us. Talk to us. Love us. Hey, we did get an email in the Bama Geeks at gmail.com. We did. Oh. Yeah. Oh, mail time. Mail call. Mail call. <laughs> More like junk mail call. It was an <laughs> Is it something we can actually talk about? It was like, hey, advertise our enhancing product. I went, no. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. I so. figured it might have been one of those complaint emails we were like queuing up for you know, complaining against Kevin like the last episode. You know? <laughs> no, we, we've not had any complaints. It's been good. So, yeah, it, it was junk mail. So, it's hard, it's hard to get your hopes up. Oh, okay. But, <laughs> well, but uh, yeah, yeah, it happens. But uh, this episode, we're going to jump into Dragon Con because three of us went and then we've got Alabama Comic Con coming up here the second weekend in October. Ghostbusters Afterlife. We're going to touch on that. Some news with that, which you've probably heard by now because yeah. we're just late to the party as always. <laughs> and uh, no spoilers, but Shang-Chi will give you uh, yeah, go see it or sit at home and wait for it to come out on Disney+. Plus. And that's something I definitely want to touch on. But uh, yeah, H how you guys been? It's been a, well, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's been a month. I'll just stop stuttering. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm good. I mean, I've got my voice back. Um, I've missed out on the last two podcasts, but hey. 
And the, the thing was, you losing your voice for, for episode 12 was like a one day thing. You had your voice back the next day. Yeah, it was weird. I, I still can't explain it. But tr- truth be told, I did not have a voice that night. Yeah, it was gone. And the next day it was back. And I'm like, what? You just wanted to get out of the podcast. Yeah, I'm, I just wanted to find every excuse I could not to sit and do my podcast. Well, losing your voice. I mean, really, that's a little extreme. <laughs> well, that's that's pretty much the best excuse. I mean, huh? I mean, that's, yeah. that's true. Yeah. <laughs> well, Kev, what you been up to, man, since we all last sat down and. Oh, you know that last episode we did, I was gushing about, man, I'm going to have this freaking awesome Halloween display and I'm going to be working on some skeletons that, mm-hmm. that are going to have Ghostbusters and stuff. I've got all that done. It's done. <laughs> oh, yeah. I literally yes. have the skeletons sitting in my living room in a chair on their own. They're like they're sitting there talking to each other. <laughs> and um, they're still there because we have um, here in Alabama, we currently have a uh, the remnants of a hurricane or a tropical storm mm-hmm. that just keeps churning up rain after rain after yeah. rain. And it has pretty much been raining all week. And, mm-hmm. you know, you like to ask, well, that's only this week. Why haven't you done anything else? Guys, life happened. That's just the way it is. What? What so, are you talking about? Yeah, I know. It's crazy, right? Um, so uh, I'm really looking forward to definitely, well, I don't like to say definitely, but there's a very, very good chance that by the next episode, I'll be able to share and possibly share on our social media channels some pictures of you know my display with the Ghostbusters fighting the ghost and things like that. So cool. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. So you know I'm, I'm throwing a lot. I, I uh, for those who don't know me, I throw a lot of uh, effort into my display at, at the house, and I'm I've expanded out uh, the projector display that I have with all the little uh, figures and things. And I've already been retweeted already, or not retweeted. What do you call it when it's when it's reshared on Instagram? Is it like? Just reshared on Instagram. Regrammed. Regrammed. Okay. I've been regrammed by Atmos <laughs> FX. Really? Oh, nice. With my stuff. Yeah. Oh, nice. So, yeah. yeah. So um, I, I have not started running the both of the projectors yet, but I've done, I finished my tests on the first projector and um, I'm hoping I'm going to start this week. Uh, actually starting to run them. And I am now known throughout the community as the guy who is going to have the full candy bars. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I'm going to be the guy giving away full candy bars at the house. So um, I'm sure um, the amount of kids I have at the house will probably triple this year. So, <laughs> yeah, pretty much every Walmart visit um, is is buying more bo- boxes of full candy bars. I think I'm up to 150 candy bars now. Oh, wow. man, um, your, your yeah. entire yeah, I have closet. diabetes in the other room. OK, <laughs> <laughs> full on diabetes. OK, so, yeah, that's been my life. Your hall closet is just going to be floor to ceiling. Chocolate bars. With beat us. You are, you are the Willy Wonka of your neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm cashing in my golden ticket and going to Kevin's house. There we go. You're more than welcome. <laughs> well, I, I attempted to add some fall decor to our house. Um, we really don't have much to work with, but I did the best I could. Um, I did put the fall wreath on the door and I put the fall garland on top of the curtains, Drapes, yeah. and uh, uh, I do have a, a jack-o'-lantern, a ceramic jack-o'-lantern in the house, but um, guys, I'm kind of suffering from some space danger around here. I don't have a don't have a lot of room to no. work with much of anything else. We have to elaborate on space danger. That is a stolen term from our friends at Yes Have Some Podcast, because <laughs> our friend Craig has this massive toy room that he has to constantly sell stuff out of to put more <laughs> stuff in because he runs out of space. He calls that space danger. Yes. So. <laughs> and our our house is a is a very good definition of space danger. But hopefully not for too much longer. We've got... Uh, for the past three years that that <laughs> Jess and I have been married and I've been living here with her, it's been like, you know, uh, we need a, a big storage building workshop out in the backyard. And so this week, that process is starting. We're getting the old shed that's not worth anything, can't store anything in it. It's mm-hmm. We've got some guys coming that's going to demo it and take it out of the yard. So Haul very soon, away. very soon, we're going to get that storage building in the backyard and I can finally move all my stuff from the other side of the state and have a workshop. I can Mm -hmm. set up my 3d printers and mess up a lot of things. It's going to be great. Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> we're, we're we are beginning that process. Maybe a slow process, but oh, it's you know, been slow. Got to take the first step somewhere. Yep. So, Bo, what have you been up to, man? Ah, uh, well, of course, I uh, we are we are big fans of what we dub as the spooky season in my house. Soon as uh, soon as Labor Day was over, because I respect holidays that become before me, <laughs> <laughs> and I enjoy look, being look, I like enjoy I- <laughs> enjoy the cel- celebrate the holiday that that I stand firm with to keep the Christmas nuts from trying to take over the entire fourth <laughs> quarter of the calendar. Look, I just Thank shared, I just shared the picture of my Christmas ornament. I wasn't trying to get I, ahead of anything. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> See, everyone thinks I dislike Christmas. I love Christmas. Christmas mm-hmm. is a wonderful holiday. It just needs to know its place. Yes, exactly. Right. Like I, I, you know, like I was, I was aggravated when it took Christmas, when it took Thanksgiving, but I will stand firm yeah. until I am in, in a spooky skeleton myself. I will still be yeah. trying to keep the Yule from trying to rule. Okay. I mean, Halloween is my absolute favorite holiday. Oh, and yes. It will always trump Christmas. I, I'm the same thing. I, I I love Christmas, and but Christmas absolutely needs to know its place. Yeah. It I, I, to, I, I, to stay away from my spoopy season. Okay. That's exactly. I see Christmas. You try to get what you want. On Halloween, you can be what you want. Just oh, always good. remember that. Uh, yeah. Okay. When we start making T-shirts, that's going to be one of the first quotes on it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, after what we always do is like after I got home from Dragon Con, usually I have to mow the lawn because I've been busy and been gone for the whole week. We mow the lawn and then we put up our decorations. Right now, we just have a few inflatables and we have a few strand lights on our um, our banister as you walk in mm-hmm. uh, or the front door. But yeah, we have a few Halloween blow ups. Most of them are all Nightmare for Christmas related because my wife, that's like for me for Ghostbusters, Nightmare for Christmas is for my wife, which yeah. I, I like the movie. Don't get me wrong, but she, that's, that's, that's her thing. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm completely cool with it because the, with the blow ups, we got a really cool, we've got a Jack, we've got a Oogie Boogie, Sally, mm-hmm. Dr. Finkelstein. Yeah. We even have like a green lights around our mailbox. So we have a few spooky things up. So that's, that's for us. We'll put a few indoor decorations up here in a little bit. Cause you just, usually we just try to get, get it, get it a little bit closer yeah. with that. But, nice. but I mean, and what's great is my neighbor across the street, I guess, like I said, they, they decorate like us, but I guess our peer pressure, they got their stuff up this weekend. So <laughs> <laughs> but me, me, and him are, me and my neighbor, we're talking collaborations. Eventually we're going to like, uh, you, you guys has been to my house. There's a, area above it where we could probably connect it he is a he works for the power company so i oh, he is cl- no. climbing climbing <laughs> gear so you never know we may oh. have some spooky zooming from our house <laughs> to his house please tell me it, is this the neighbor across the street or across the backyard uh, uh across the street like uh directly across mm-hmm. the front of the house okay so so you need to get one of those like sky bridges that connects yeah. your yards <laughs> and then and decorate just have things hanging over the road itself yeah, that's what that's that's what's kind of what they're complicated that they're contemplating. We just got to figure out, make sure there's enough clearance for like garbage truck or delivery trucks. You know. <laughs> Even though we don't Guys, have a there have been actual conversations on this, apparently. Oh, no, 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 this is this has been <laughs> since they've moved in and we realize we are very like minded and we get along. Yeah, we're definitely something's going to happen eventually. <laughs> so next episode will be Bo in the bucket truck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and how my property owners association is going to have a long talk with me. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bearden, we need to have a talk. Yeah. yeah. You can get spooky, but not that spooky. <laughs> <laughs> there is a there is a limit to the spookiness. That is awesome. <laughs> I wish we had a better setup outside our house to do more outside decorations, but we will eventually. It, it yeah. Eventually, but I mean, in all honesty, we we really don't, and it's that's a little disappointing. But now, once we get out the, of our neighborhood and I hit retirement and actually have time to do these things, sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The cool the cool thing about my neighborhood, I, I moved into this neighborhood last year, and um, with you know, I moved in in July, and I was like, I know I've got to do something big uh, for Halloween because everybody in my neighborhood is no, I'm the Halloween nerd. You know, um, <laughs> this guy's going to do the Halloween stuff. And I remember driving around my neighborhood and being like, there's really not many people that do. Everybody does Christmas. Everybody does Christmas. But not, you know, not many people do Halloween. Well, I did this last year and I had a lot of people drive by and, I, you know, I, I'd be sitting in there watching TV and I'd see people drive by. And they'd slow down <laughs> and be looking at the display. And then I had a lot of people come up and ask me and was talking. And I've noticed this year more people are doing Halloween stuff. You started the you started, started something, something in your neighborhood. You started yep. the spooky season. 
I'm you, that guy. You were the something strange in the neighborhood. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love it. I love it. Cool. That's awesome. Well, I, I can't wait to see what you guys. I mean, we, we've we've been seeing in in our you know uh, personal connections and everything, mm-hmm. being yeah. able to see your photos and everything, and everything looks great so far. You can you can just we have a wreath on the door. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and we and with a, a ceramic jack or lantern in the house, so you know we're we're in the season. Yeah, hey, you know, hey, long let's say long. It could be a yard full of stuff, or hey, you got a, like you said, a wreath and a ceramic pumpkin. You're decorated that's for right. Halloween, <laughs> and that's what's important. Well, and we were going to get that huge, that massive blow up Ursula from Home mm-hmm. Depot, and it disappeared off the website. We can't find it Ooh. now. It's like mm-hmm. okay, you you just took Ursula away from me. I can't have that. I need I, I need my sea witch. <laughs> Gimme. That, was that Home Depot or Lowe's? Home Depot. Okay. Yeah. So. Oh, we do I'm have, but oh, 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 we do have a haunted mansion projector though in the house. That's though. true. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. You can get those at Lowe's. It was mm-hmm. like fifteen bucks, and it's it's one of those little domes. You mm-hmm. turn it on, mm-hmm. and it rotates around, and that it, it puts up different color haunted mansion themed pictures on the yeah. walls. Yeah. Circ- um, yeah. Turns and you know circles around the room and things like that. Yeah. You know, Home Depot every year they sell a twelve foot mm. skeleton that you can get mm-hmm. uh-huh. that is incredibly difficult to get. You have to know when they're going to drop it on yep. the website, and then it sells out, and you can never get it again. I still want to get one of those because my original plan was to have the the three skeletons shooting at a giant skeleton. Yeah, which would oh, have been hilarious, good. like a giant, like mutated skeleton, which would have had like its own lights and everything. Right. Well, well look, they've upped their game. The first year it was just it was a big, tight, giant skeleton. This year now is a giant skeleton. Doesn't have like LED lights mm-hmm. or something in it. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. if you can't get it this year, maybe next year it'll be you know I don't know giant skeleton that moves animatronically or something. You never know. Maybe. True. Yeah. Hey, that might be good. Hold off and see what the next <laughs> next uh, thing That's they true. come up with make it bigger and better. Yep. I've noticed a lot. It, now, we went to the only spirit store that we've been to is the one in Oxford. That's because it's in route when we drop the kids off. That's the only one we've been to. And we went to that one not too long after they opened. And it was still pretty, pretty yeah. bare. There was yeah. not a lot of things out. But Brock did find the Haunted Mansion plaque that he'd been wanting uh, to take to work and hang in his office. Um, but a lot of uh, I've noticed that Haunted Mansion is really come into play more this year there's, there's a should. lot more haunted mansion merchandise out there this year as it should well, disney's got to get their hooks in somewhere man come yeah. on yep i'm i'm all about the haunted mansion mm-hmm. merchandise and decor and we're not doing this on video for the public to see but mm-hmm. behind me is a, an 11 by 14 i believe it is a mm-hmm. haunted mansion print you know the old poster that came from disneyland signed by bob gurr who you know? Mm. Who developed the Doom Buggy? So mm-hmm. somebody had a private signing with him, and I'm like, "Oh yes, Doom Buggy designer, give me yeah. Disney." Hey, um, circling back a little bit here, and I'm still the thunder here a little bit. But um, one of the things I wanted to mention was uh, I mentioned this on on my social not too long ago, but um, I now own one of the actually probably the only car on the market that you can watch the Mandalorian in out from the factory. I freaking love it. My, they, they finally updated Tesla's. So they've got Disney plus so I can sit in my car and I can watch the Mandalorian. And you think, why would you want to sit in your car and watch the Mandalorian? Because you can. In this, okay. Well, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jessica. That's number one, because you can. Number two is the speaker system was built for that, for like Netflix and, and oh. Disney plus. So it sounds phenomenal. <laughs> So like, you know, we're, we're going around like playing Pokemon Go, you know, like Pokemon Go is a big thing, you know, playing Pokemon Go. And every time we stop and do something, I'll annoy my girlfriend by like, I'll put it in par, hit the button, turn on. I'm like, you know, we're only going to be watching this for two minutes, but it's two minutes of the Mandalorian (laughs) before we move again. So yeah, sorry. I wanted to sneak that one in. (laughs) Oh, well, we definitely have a holiday Halloween holiday season in full effect as mm-hmm. you can tell we just finished up with with dragon con uh Bo, jessica and i went and uh wow what a difference this year mm-hmm. yes. you didn't have to wait <laughs> around for a lot of stuff <laughs> you can actually get into the dealer's room by walking in straight in <laughs> yep. um well i felt like a local con huh it really did yeah it really really did 
because as we've mentioned before, in 2019, there was about 86,000 people there. I will be shocked if they hit 40,000. Mm-hmm. I've heard year. people refer to this Dragon Con as Diet Dragon Con or Dragon, Dragon Con, Con Light. Light. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> and, and it was. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, I had a great time. I, I, stayed, mm-hmm. I stayed in the hotel room Thursday night. And all of Friday morning, mm-hmm. having to finish up a, a research paper yeah. uh, for my master's project. But uh, after that, I was done, free to free to go out the entire weekend, and you could walk everywhere. Yeah, and you know, in in the official mm-hmm. in the official Dragon Con Facebook group, which I had to mute before the con mm-hmm. because everybody was judging everybody <laughs> else for whatever COVID protocols that they were for or against. Mm-hmm. Um, while we were at Dragon Con, somebody had mentioned in there, wow, we should really do it in an attendance cap every year. This is great. Which caused Whoa. this massive <laughs> uproar. Wow. We're not there because of the safety of our family. Blah, blah, blah. Everybody got mad because why not? It's the internet and it's commenting. Get mad because that's what the internet does best. And everybody has a difference of opinions. Yeah. yeah. And, you know. I applaud everybody for staying as safe as possible. Uh, I do know two people personally who, Mm -hmm. but they still don't know if they got it before Dragon Con or, Mm -hmm. or during, but Mm -hmm. I've only heard of a handful of cases. Unfortunately, I know two people who who wound up Mm -hmm. testing positive, Mm -hmm. but when you take 40,000 people and only have a handful, you know, that's not bad. I, right. That's I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I was nervous the entire time. I sat there, mask on, only staying in very close knit circles of people that I knew were a okay, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Uh, and you know we came out without any problems. But yeah. uh, you know, I, I applaud everybody who who decided to stay home and you know whether for health reasons or just for mm-hmm. concerns of others. You know they didn't want to. They don't, they don't want to take that chance and yeah. I, I applaud it. And I'm also going to agree with that poster <laughs> in the Facebook group that there should be an attendance cap. It was wonderful. Wait, wait now, a minute. Are you, t- are you telling me that reasonable attendance numbers at a convention make it more enjoyable? It's amazing. Mm-hmm. It's kind of silly, right? Yeah. You know, San Diego Comic Con was hitting well over 100,000. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, you know, for quite a few years, Dragon Con was creeping up there. You know, like I said, 2019 was about 86,000 people. You can move around. Mm-hmm. We had floor space yep. to sit and talk, and it wasn't overly crowded. You still had a little bit of a wait in some places. It but, took less than 20 minutes to get through the main level of the Marriott. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We God, that's, that's better than when I went. And the last time I been, went was like back in 2009. Oh, and, dude. And but, that, that, I remember it being crowded then, like mm-hmm. really, really crowded. But it was, it was crowded, but like I said, on top of safety protocol and less people, it was much more ne- manageable. Yeah. 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 It, it was, it was definitely a different feel, but at the same time, I had a better time because you were not elbow to elbow. Now in the dealer's mm. room is a different story. Dealers well, if you went down the dice aisle, no. I'm oh yeah, yeah. The, the, I mean, she's not kidding. But that, she's that's not, what was people do love their dice. They do, and I wanted to look at dice, but yeah. I wasn't going to stand around in that gaggle and and yeah. try to to check it out. But. It it was the same at Magic City Con. I mean, there was a guy there that was that that, that had um. Uh, that he was selling dice. And when I went over there, there was like a gaggle of people mm-hmm. around it. And he was selling these like prefab castle things that you could like, I guess you just drop the dice into them and it comes out the front. Kind of like dice a little towers? shoot. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And, but it was like a pre- like prefab little um, wooden ones. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, the dude was really, uh, was selling it really well. Yeah. When we went up there, we kind of had to wait a minute before people, before we got over there. And I wasn't there for, for you know, for that long for the, at the convention, but I remember that was. That's the hot table. The, yeah. When he wasn't even in the dealer room, he was outside with the artists oh, in, okay. the, on, in the front of the dealer room. So it was kind of like the dealer room was, you know, it was hopping. There were people in there selling dice and stuff. But yeah, I could definitely see that. I, I agree. People do love their dice. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Well, it's, well, it's interesting. Like, like table, I knew table, there was people who played tabletop gaming. I just didn't realize how big it was until the last probably eight or nine years. And it, it's, a, it's a massive community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're hoping. I think 
we have the goal. We have the goal of the game table at some point in our lives. That's our one of our. Yeah, maybe the next house. Those are awesome. We well, need to get together guys, and play Ghostbusters again. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's what. I, yeah, that's what we need to do. We need to get together, even if at my house or your house, Bo, and then yeah. just sit down and we can do an episode while we're playing Ghostbusters yeah. or something. Ooh, I like that, that idea. Yeah. And that's like with the dice tower. I saw. I can't remember. There was a Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters too. Uh, yeah, where the I'm talking about like a main thing where we we're talking about the dice tower. I want to say it was in the board. There was a board game fan group. Somebody made a firehouse dice tower that was really cool. Like well, you come out the front of front of the doors. Oh, well, nice. Well, well, the, the Ghostbusters two board game from IDW. Oh, it did come with it. It, it came with that. Yeah, I'm sure it's in the box that I haven't opened yet. <laughs> the one you got for free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, now we have to say. Yeah, but Bo went through a lot of suffering and wait in order to get this board game, and that was kind of a oops. We're sorry, we forgot your oh, order. Yeah, that's right. So they sent him a yeah. free, for a free version. Yeah, they ordered it, and like it, then it said it billed me, then it said it didn't build me, and then I got a bo- a box, and I got with them, and I think that pretty much it was just like you're lucky, just you know, <laughs> enjoy, <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> I've got uh, actually a board game coming to the house this week. Uh, it's the the uh, I think it's also ICW. I, ICW. I hit not insane clown women. Um, <laughs> <It's fake. laughs> the IDW games, uh, Ghostbusters versus Men in Black. Yeah, I yeah. saw that. I remember they came out. It but shipped, everybody- and it, it, I think it's going to be here on Tuesday. I, I'm looking forward to to cracking that open and see what it's about. Mm. Oh, we, we've got several board games on order from Kickstarter that. Well, I shouldn't say we. It's me. I, I'm the guilty one. Um, <laughs> well, we're in this together. We're married. We're a team. We're a partnership. Yeah, but, yeah she's but, not griping about it. So we we are we are getting board we, games. We, we are, getting, <laughs> we are getting board games. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Batman the Animated Series, Batman yep. the Dark Knight Returns. There's what? Well, there's another one that's uh, Zombie Side. Yeah, jo- oh, games. Zombie yeah. Side. The yeah, the Wild cool. Wild West version. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Several games coming in over the next two years because, you know, thankfully the Kickstarter is already. I have a feeling it. y'all would like Zombie Side a lot. Yeah, we have to play that. Yeah. We'll have to bring that and play okay. that. We, we, anyway, we're, hey, <laughs> we were talking about Dragon Con and, uh, yeah, sorry. Kind, of, hey, kind of went to board games because, you know, and so. <laughs> uh, they have lots of board games at Dragon Con. Yeah, they do. But, <laughs> and a lot of people were playing them. And I did, we didn't go into the, the gaming area this year because, no. you know, we value uh, that's, that's, I was gonna say value our noses, but that's that's a stereotype <laughs> of gamers, board gamers at, at cons. Sorry. How dare you? Shame. It, well, but it is a it is a reasonable stereotype. It's it's uh, it, it, it is it like is. that. And the thing is, okay, okay, think of it from this perspective: you are trying to maintain your health because if you're an unwashed body, odds are you may not be taking protections from COVID as well, and you may have been exposed and you may not you know what i mean mm-hmm. so so that, that's okay that you didn't go that, that's okay yeah, there you go <laughs> we, we have been in the gaming areas at dragon con before there is a a certain aroma yeah but i will tell you they had the best air conditioner there oh yes <laughs> i bet if, you, if, if and, and it really wasn't that hot at dragon con this year either. no no great. but it, no. If, if you need a if you need a place to when it's really hot there to duck into go to the gaming area hold your nose <laughs> yep. go in and you're gonna you're gonna get cooled off extremely quickly <laughs> but it's like subarctic in there and it's wonderful especially <laughs> when it's like 80 98 degrees yeah, and outside if, you're, of- if you're one of the, the the female cosplayers wearing body paint don't go in there <laughs> <laughs> don't because you know young eyes so um <laughs> <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. Well, it's cold, apparently. <laughs> yeah. In more, in, in more than one way. <laughs> oh, but I, I tell you that the best part of Dragon Con was just being around all of our friends that we have not seen in two years. Yes. It's yeah. always the best yeah. part. Oh, my goodness. We had so many friends from all over the country that, that came and we sat around. We've got an area for all the Ghostbusters fans there in the Hyatt. It's off the, the, the escalators, not the very bottom floor, mm-hmm. but like the middle floor. Um, yeah. Right better. down from the from the bar area, the lobby area. Yeah. 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 It, it, we call that home turf. And we sat there Friday night. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had our luau Friday night there. Our, yeah. our luau uh, where we all wore Hawaiian themed 
Hawaiian Ghostbuster themed outfits. Uh, we had that Friday night, Saturday, mm-hmm. a lot of us met down there. Sunday, we all burned the midnight oil down yeah. there, you know, for that one last night of hanging out together. Yeah. And, uh, and it's such a good time. So it's so good to see, you know, Dan and Megan and, and, uh, Ashley and Craig, Abby, Jake, uh, Phil and Jamie. There, there's so many people that, that we get to spend time with every year. And it's usually at this one event and we have not been able to do that since 2019. And, and that's what I enjoyed the most. That's where mm-hmm. I stayed the most. We, we did a lot of walking around, but like mm-hmm. I said, there wasn't a lot of waiting yeah. where we went. So you got through a lot of things fairly quickly. Yeah. And then just, I'm old. I want to get off my feet. And thankfully, <laughs> I was not the only one feeling that this year. Most everybody in the Ghostbusters group were like, eh, you know, we've been at this a few years. So everybody took that chance to to sit down and relax mm-hmm. there at home turf and, you know, drink water or various other beverages. You know, I, I sucked up. Whatever, water, you're, but, whatever you chose, yeah. whatever you brought, whatever you wanted. Yeah. For me, that's just always that's that's the most what I look forward to in Dragon Con is to to be with those people. You know, uh, Katie did a lot with the with the PKE uh, surge yeah, planning did. group this mm-hmm. year, and and she did wonderful. She did a really good job with all the planning and the putting together, and you know the the parade. It was interesting this year because Ooh, yeah, we got to talk about that. <laughs> uh, the we were really curious to see how this was going to play out because normally these these streets from the time from the start of the parade route to the very end are lined up four and five rows deep with people on the sidewalks. Usually, they're usually non-con participants, mm-hmm. usually a estimate of 100,000 people are normally on the sides of the street for the entire parade. This year, the first half of the parade was a ghost town. <laughs> Because mm-hmm. they only they only allowed con attendees, and of course, you know, con attendees after Friday night partying are only going to walk so far. <laughs> so they, most of them are still, you know, trying to sleep it off. Yeah. So from from the parade staging area to until we got close to the high at the hotels where Dragon Con actually takes place, dead. There was nobody. We were like waving and you know, oh hi, bird on the fence. <laughs> you know, who are you going to call? Um, <laughs> <laughs> and he just, it would chirp at us and fly away because, yeah. But uh, <laughs> but w- once we got to the downtown area or to the hotel area, man, yeah. then, then it was, it was like, back to normal. But even yep. looking up at, at the parking decks where a lot of people usually hang out was very, yeah. very sparse. Very so, sparse in the decks, yeah. How did they keep people away? Their answer when they first said that they were going to on a, they were going to only allow con attendees, somebody asked them that, how are you going to enforce that? And they said- we have our secrets. Mm-hmm. And but how did they wind up doing it? I'm going to assume Atlanta PD. Yeah. Yeah. That, because, yeah because, because they were everywhere. Mm-hmm. Atlanta yeah, PD okay. was everywhere all over this thing. Yeah. And I'm going to I'm going to assume that they they turned the fine folks at the Atlanta Police Department into badge checkers. <laughs> were there other events going well, there, on? Well, there, well, Go ahead, bro. I would say that I think I saw a lot of hired event staff like badge yeah. checkers. I don't know if you Volunteers. saw them. I saw them a couple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. But I, the, well, the, the, uh, it was later, it was a couple hours later, but the Alabama and Miami had a football game. Yeah. Across, m- maybe, you know, right across town. But beyond that, that was the only major event that morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It was dead. It, it was dead till we got close to the con area downtown. Yeah. Or to, to in the hotels. It was really nice, though, to see once the crowd picked up, though, you kind of got that, you know, parade feel again like you'd had in years. And mm-hmm. and uh, I'm just thankful for the good weather. And we still had fun. And we still had about 60, 60 something Ghostbusters in the parade. In, in the parade. Yeah. Yeah. So well, you we know, had one Ecto this year, Jamie now from Ohio. We got it. We had trouble own. for going in between the ectos. That's right. Yeah. One ecto. <laughs> yeah. Some of us didn't get run over again this year. Hey. <laughs> Well, was there any other, now. um, I've, I've got, you know, some Dragon Con experiences though, that I, you know, wanted to share. And as Brock had mentioned, he was in the, he decided, to. I know one of the biggest things that I'd heard was of course badge pickup on Thursday was, was crazy. And it took, mm-hmm. you know, two to three hours to pick up badges, but, uh, Brock and, and I, and we got to the badge pickup and they were going to shut it down at 10 o'clock. We got there at nine 30. 
they shut it down. Yeah. And that, that's because the ballroom where they were getting the badges just got way too full. Mm-hmm. Got that got to yeah. uncomfortable capacity and they said, oh, we're done. Yeah. We're shutting it early. So we got up uh Friday morning, uh about seven o'clock and headed down and we we had uh they opened up badge pickup at eight o'clock. Me and Brock had our badges by eight twenty and we were we were done. And yeah. He went back to the room, like he said, and worked on his paper. So I decided to take a little stroll. and. Oh, yeah. Check and, this. Uh, <laughs> Check this out. So where, where, where little miss went and had a stroll. And go ahead. <laughs> so I'm, you know, I go, I go through the Hilton. Okay, I'm going to get my coffee. All right. Let's walk to the Hyatt. Oh, wait a minute. I, I see Rob Paulson and I see uh, Maurice LaMarche over there. And they're just... Uh, Standing by the elevator, the uh, escalator, talking to people. Okay, I'm gonna walk over here. I'm kind of gonna put myself in this little group here, and uh, all of a sudden, uh, Rob Paulson just says, "Hi, I'm Rob." I said, "Hi, Rob. I'm Jessica," <laughs> and uh, got to spend some time talking with Rob Paulson and uh, moved over to uh, Mr. Maurice Lamarch and uh, got to talk to him. If you're listening to this podcast, you should know who these guys are. They're the voice of your childhood. Yes. They're mm-hmm. Pinky and the Brain, uh, Egon from the real Ghostbusters. Raphael from Ninja Raphael. Turtles. Yeah. Wacko from the Animaniacs. Is it Yakko or Wacko? I'm sorry. He's Yakko. He's Yakko. Yakko, yeah. So that is the uh, the voices of our childhood that I got to spend some time with Friday morning. And mm-hmm. uh, just just a, such a pleasure. Got selfies with them. Free. So free yeah free. you know you well, talk to them or their agent went around to kind of like no you can't do that come on you know. yeah, that's one that's one thing you, you catch a lot of these celebrities away from their handlers mm-hmm. they're, they're they're much they're, easier to deal with yeah so that was a that was quite a delight on friday morning just you know strolling about it's kind of like that's how i got to meet rick flair and standing in the in the <laughs> lobby of the Marriott one morning at Dragon Con that year. So, yeah, we went over and said so the, the, hello to Mr. Flair and blew off Sting because we didn't recognize him without his makeup. <laughs> so, the, 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 the secret here, Brock, is to just like tie a tether to Jessica and then let her go about 50 feet in front of you. And then she'll find all the really cool people. And then she you does. just catch up and go, oh, hi. Yeah. I'm oh, with her. oh, I sent Brock the text, you know. Huh? Yeah. I, the, I'm, the, I'm, I'm in the middle of, I think I'm on word 600 by that point <laughs> in the paper. And she goes, oh, look. It's Robin Maurice. And I went, uh, d- of nice. course. Thanks. I'm sitting up here working. <laughs> but I'm telling you, Rob, I, I got more out of Rob Paulson than I ever expected. Super, in, in, in super way. nice guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Brock, please explain to me what a bad way would be. <laughs> I don't know. I don't yeah, know. Look. There, there's nothing wrong with Rob. I, Rob is one of the most magnificent people on the face of the earth. He yep. really is. I, I've, I've had the chance to meet him a couple of times, both him and Maurice, a couple of times. And I mean, Maurice is one of uh, the Alabama Ghostbusters honorary members, mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and we love those guys. They're I'm just trying to imagine what a a bad experience with Rob Paulson would be. Well, he could I mean, have been if, a if he has other. laryngitis. <laughs> if he has laryngitis, yeah, maybe. Yeah, but God, that guy is just like so genuinely awesome. Yeah, yeah, he's always he's positive. A beautiful man. man. He was, and you know, just. He was he was just very happy with the you know the protocols and the things that were in place. He was excited to be out and back at cons and to meet people and he just generally loves talking to to the fans and of course I I told him I said I know everybody tells you this when they meet you but you know talking to you and meeting you you were just you were the voice of my childhood. Yep. And he says he never He'll never, ever, ever get tired of people telling him mm-hmm. that because if that little something that he does brings that, yep. you know, that much joy to somebody's life, it's, he said, how could I ever get tired of hearing that? Yeah, that was awesome. Like I said, I met him and Maurice there a couple of years ago. And that's why I told him, I was like, dude, you guys ruled every Saturday morning for me mm-hmm. from the time I was like seven to like 14. I mean, yeah. come on. Yep. And even into your forties, yes, even <laughs> yeah. into my forties, they're still ruining. Still ruining. It. Well, and now I want to. You want to expose your kids to it, so that exactly. that means you get re-exposure to it. And now we've got Animaniacs are are back now. You know, we've mm-hmm. got season one, we've got season two coming out. I think November fifth. So mm-hmm. that's gonna yeah. be huge. Maybe think since we're talking about chance meetings at Dragon Con, should I tell? Should I? I know Kev wasn't here for this. Should I tell them my chance meeting at Dragon Con? The uh, yeah. the the young lady who thought I was someone else. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. All right, here we go. Yes. It's the story time. Yes, please, please tell the story. Was, yes. was this Saturday or Sunday night? I can't remember. It was this one was of the Saturday two. Saturday night. 
Saturday night. Of course, we're all in our wait, home. Wait, 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 oh, wait. Oh, yes, good. Wait, when did when did your family come? Because it, it was the it night was fr- they were there. That was Friday. It was Friday. No, it was Saturday. They went there that night. Okay, all right. Yeah, it was Saturday night. So it was. It was. I think it was Saturday. It was either Saturday or Sunday. Either way, yeah. we're all in our little home turf area sitting there. <laughs> I'm sitting down on the floor. All right. And I th- believe the masquerade was going on at the same time. Well, I'm sitting there, and then there's this young lady. I- I'm wearing my mask sitting there, so you know, all you see is you know up here. All of a sudden, there's this young lady. She's dressed as, I'm assuming, Frozen 2, uh, Fruit Elsa. Frozen 2, Elsa. Yes. She comes, like, I'm sitting down, and, like, she kind of comes walking up to the side of me, like, it's, like, kind of, you know, within my area, looking at me very oddly. And I look at her, I was like, yes, can I help you? And then she looks at me, and then she goes, Oh, I thought you were my husband. Which is, uh, like, I might well, say she, yes, she is very enjoying her Dragon Con very well. Which is yeah, I, that's she. Enjo- she's she's had that right to. So that's okay. That's cool. All right. Then she just ta- she talks to me. Just you know nothing, and then she goes on her merry way. Thirty forty minutes pass, maybe longer. I'm not sure. I think about an hour. About an hour. Well, there she comes. She is walking with her husband. The gentleman <laughs> does have dark hair, but he is cosplaying as Disney's. Hades. He has blue tinted face paint. He's wearing glasses. <laughs> blue hair. And, and blue hair. And, and like, he, he, it was like, I, it, you know, I would be, it would be the donation to charity portion of the pie chart of, of how much I look like this gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then that's it. It goes on. And then I saw her say, Oh, you found him. Thumbs up. Then she goes, like, She goes, Yeah, yeah. I'm so, I'm so sorry. Can I at least give you a hug? And I'm like, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> and then Ron's over there going, that doesn't look like Honey Marin. Yes, because <laughs> which my wife's name is Honey Gill. <laughs> and Elsa's friend in, in, Elsa, in uh, Frozen 2 is Honey Marin. Yeah. But, oh, that's funny. Okay, see, I, and, I, I, I so still have yet to watch Frozen 2, so that's what? even better. Oh, oh, my gosh. Okay, so then you had no idea story. why Ron was saying that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, that, so, yeah, yeah, Honey Marin is in Frozen 2. And, okay. I didn't remember that either. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, and 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 Elsa's husband is standing there going, uh, "He looks nothing like me." <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, "Hey, man, so, just, just let it go. Let, let it, it go." Great, the, the quote, the great uh, Jace Ambrose, Dragon Con. <laughs> <laughs> That's and, right. And there is an actual photo that I was able to sneak of this chance yeah. encounter, and mm-hmm. it's very. She, she's. She's on the floor, kneeling, looking at Bo, just looking directly at him. And Bo's <laughs> got this look like, huh? She was kneeling? Yeah, yeah like, she was it, down She was down on the floor. Yeah. I was sitting, my buddy's sitting on the carpet. Yeah. Like, I'm sitting up, laying up against the, the, the glass oh, of the okay. railway. Yeah. Like, that's what I'm saying. That's what, because, like, I was, like, when I was just standing there or nothing, just sitting there, she just comes out of the, my peripheral into, like, kind of in the uh, area. All right, Kevin, look at the Did screen. They, I, I apologize to our audio listeners. Oh, oh, okay, <laughs> okay. That that helps a little bit because I was trying to figure out how a drunk woman would be kneeling. Yeah, yeah. She we we were yeah. sitting down. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We, we were all sitting on the floor. <laughs> all right. Interesting. Yeah, Bo's yeah. looking off to the side like hip, hip. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a happily married man. Okay, I'm a happily God, married I don't man. Know how to handle this? <laughs> <laughs> I have been married for almost 10 years. I've not had a random woman approach me in any way in a while. I don't know what to do. And then she gave you the cold shoulder. Oh. Uh, uh, let it just let it go, Elsa. Let it go. Right. But it was so funny. Like I said, it was just it was just one of those great encounters. And I'm so glad that all my friends were there that it'll be one of those things to Oh, that that photo got Remember? shared all over the oh, all, yeah. all over the we, we, we're all part of a massive group chat for for the Dragon Con attendees, and that got yeah. shared like, "What is Elsa doing to Bo?" <laughs> it's like, you just had to be there for all the people who exactly. couldn't come to Dragon Con. They didn't get the inside story until later. Yeah. Bo knows yeah. what he did. Yeah, exactly. That, that, I think that was one of the things yeah. that ran yeah. with. It. <laughs> they can't let that. They can't let that one go. Bo knows what he did. I, and then, hey, and that's what's fun. That's the great thing about it. People are enjoying that. So that's what keeps it alive. It ain't me. I know my 15 minutes is up, but hey, if the other people still enjoy it, <laughs> let them have it. One thing I learned about myself, I think, at this last Dragon Con is I am the person that if you want a picture of somebody and you don't want to go ask them for it, I will be the one to go get mm-hmm. that picture for you. Okay. Th- this is how understanding of a, of a lady she is. How understanding of a wife. <laughs> okay. I have... You know, I, I've got a vast love of the Fallout world, you know, Fallout, the video game. Mm-hmm. And so there's this one girl who the only girl I saw the entire con dresses the Nuka-Cola girl. Mm-hmm. 
Well, you know, she's got a midriff. She's got a, a kind of a halter top type <laughs> outfit on. So she's kind of out there. It feels like the old like uh, World War II bomber yeah, girl yeah, the, type thing. Yeah, Design exactly. Look. Exactly. And so, you know, I love that. I, I've got uh, I've I've got several like art prints of Nuka Cola girl. Nuka Cola is the drink in the Fallout world. Is the is the Coca Cola mm-hmm. in Fallout? And so that's their mascots, Nuka Cola girl. And so I'm like at at this point in my life, 45 gray, <laughs> going. I really like her outfit. She did really well. Like mm-hmm. she had the wig that was sticking straight back. Yeah. Like the hair was sticking straight back, just like Nuka Cola Girl. I'm like, this is a fantastic costume, but I don't want to seem like a creep because this girl is like, she's in her mid twenties, <laughs> early to mid twenties. And I'm just like, Hey, you know, <laughs> ignore my wife. You know, but instead I'm like, Hey honey, I really like that outfit. And I'm, that's the first Nuka Cola Girl I've seen here and the complete get up with a rocket pack on the back and everything else and the helmet. Said, Would you mind walking over there and getting that? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, no problem. So my wife, being understanding of my fandom of mm-hmm. and my love of Fallout, yeah. she goes and takes a picture. Yeah. Well, it wasn't too much later. Uh, there is an, an aerial, uh, a really beautiful aerial. And y'all know my love of aerial. Mm-hmm. She's my number one. Uh, I'd again, I'm like, I'm old and gray. I don't want to come off. Honey, can you go take a picture of that aerial? <laughs> she goes, takes a picture. There's a an lady Elvira. as Elvira who looks fantastic. She looks just like about she's built like Elvira. Me, child of 80s, who has met mm-hmm. Elvira mm-hmm. three times and loves Elvira. Hey, honey, would you mind go grab a picture of Elvira? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I got all the pictures thanks to my wife. Yeah. Well, and, there's and a- it didn't come off as a creep. Except doesn't it kind of doesn't it kind of suck though that it's kind of gotten to that point now to where it's like you you kind of feel like a creep for going and asking for for photos. I hate that. You, I really hate you're that. You're absolutely right. I and and I I, I want to be. Well, res- it's not. I, well, it's I, not you. It's it's. I wouldn't say it's not you. It's just there are people who do creepy things that just happen to be exactly us old parts. And, I, I, <laughs> but, I, and, and the fact that you have to be aware and you have to and 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 it, it sometimes and with some folks like with Brock, you know, it's the hesitancy's there to go because you don't want to feel that way because of something someone else did. Exactly. No. I, I hate that. All, all the years, uh, golly, you know, we mentioned before, I've been going to con since 1992, 1993. And I, I've done costumes, you know, probably the last 15 years I've always gone just casual, but until the last 15 years I've done costumes and stuff. And I appreciate the art and the work that goes mm-hmm. into these costumes mm-hmm. so much, but yeah. sometimes you do find that costume of somebody of the opposite sex that maybe there's a little too much skin showing or, you know, there's, there, there's an age difference. And now I've gotten to that point where I feel like there is an age difference to where I don't want to come off as that creepy guy because there have been so many stories, mm-hmm. you know, especially with the whole, you know, Me Too movement and stuff that has crept into the con world in, in years past. And I don't ever want to be accused of that. And I want to, I, I want to respect their art mm-hmm. and their costumes but I don't yeah. want to make them uncomfortable and yeah. I don't want to look like the guy who's going to cause trouble. Right. So yeah. I have a tiny, beautiful wife. <laughs> I send her now. It's wonderful. It's great. Essentially, you have respectful anxiety is what exactly. you have. It's oh, basically, that's basically, yeah, cool. it's exactly. Yeah, that's I have, good. I, I'm very respectful. I appreciate the art. I'd like to have, you know, you know, I'd, I'd like to have experience pictures and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, and just us too. So we both have the pictures and I get to, show my respect and save face for me and the cosplayer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's one thing I, I had touched on too, with just me making social media posts, you know, being at Dragon Con was that I always want to go and I want to, I, I love to look at the costumes. I love the creativity that goes into the costumes and the time and the effort that people put mm-hmm. into these things. I, I want to see these things, but it's, it's so when you've got a large area of this going on, three hotels, you know, you just kind of have to be at the right place at the right time. And it's not as easy. I always say, I want to take all these pictures of costumes and, and all these things that I see. And I don't come away with what I feel like I should have. But when you when you think about it, this is all that would be pretty much all you would have to do is just sit around and take photos. And to me, that takes away from those moments that mean the most to me, which is spend time with those friends and to have those moments with friends that you don't get to see, but maybe once a year. And, and this dragon con 
we didn't, Brock and I didn't do any costumes. We were really freed up. We didn't have anything really holding us down other than the, you know, the PKE surge things that we wanted to attend and be a part of. So, you know, I had a little more freedom to move around and I just had to say myself, you know, when I'm walking around, if I see something, if I can grab it, great. I'm, I don't really want to go into the large crowds and chase someone across the room because that's usually what you have to do. And, uh, I just settled with what I found when I was moving about. And then when we were sitting there as a group together as friends, I would catch the ones that would, you know, come by. And all of our friends are in agreement. If we find pictures of each other that we like, we're just going to steal them from each other. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. We steal them. We we don't care. Megan did a fantastic job, too, talking about pictures. She always does a fantastic job with the Mm -hmm. pictures she takes Mm -hmm. of of our group and our people. And uh, she did a really great job. And the and the GoPro stuff was interesting. That got added into the equations this year. So yeah, Ron Ron Daniels, who is six foot five, an attorney out of Middle Georgia. Ron, being that tall and wearing a tombstone tackle from the real Ghostbusters cartoon, <laughs> had the GoPro in his helmet. Yeah, and of course, you know everybody knows the 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 last shot of the the latest Afterlife trailer is you know Ray picking up the phone in his bookstore, going, "We're closed." You know, well, it's it's turned into we closed, we closed, we closed throughout all the the Ghostbusters community, and so you hear Ron walking across and they on this GoPro thing, we closed, yelling at people in the in, in the, the crowd, parade. we closed. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I, that's what I like you know the regular fans who've waited so long for this movie sequel they're all teared up enjoyed all the good sequences and yeah. all us crazy nuts who have been proton building proton packs and doing this stuff and were we amused more amused about we close we, we close <laughs> we're close <laughs> we close <laughs> oh but yeah it's you know and the probably the last thing I want to hit on with for me personally y'all can hit on what you want to uh, with Dragon Con, with celebrity encounters this year was, mm-hmm. you know, we talked the last time that we all sat down together how we were excited about getting Christopher Eccleston and Billy Piper. That was going to mm-hmm. be our one big pro photo shoot for the con. And I guess I, I'm, I'm thinking Billy was trapped in the UK and couldn't travel to the US due I to COVID so. restrictions. Yeah. And so she had to back out of Dragon Con. We're like, okay, well, that, that just leaves Chris. And I was like, you know, and his photo op happened at the exact same time as lunch for PKE surge on Sunday. And I wanted to meet Chris Eccleston, but I was like, uh, I'd rather go eat lunch with the friends, you mm-hmm. know, without yeah. Billy, it's kind of I, as much as I want to meet him. I still wanted him and Billy. Well, as it turns out, I think I'm done with celebrity photo ops, professional photo ops until this COVID thing is, is mm-hmm. out of the equation because we saw pictures of Eccleston. It kind of it was kind of like the Jody Benson thing with us yeah. for Atlanta Comic Con, where there was a plexiglass, and it is just the most distracting. Why am mm-hmm. I paying so much money for this thing in the picture? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. you're not getting to hug the celebrity or meet the celebrity. You know, like we have in years past, and yeah. do interesting photos. Like when I had my pro photo op a few years ago with Karen Gillan. You know, I come in dressed as the Seventh Doctor. But I've got the eleventh Doctor's sonic screwdriver with me, and so I hold the eleventh Doctor's sonic screwdriver. I look at her and I said, "Here's the seven Doctor's umbrella. Just make a weird face." And she said, "Okay." And mm-hmm. so I'm holding the eleventh Doctor's sonic screwdriver. She's holding the seventh Doctor's umbrella, and we both got this look of what? Yeah, like, you know, and <laughs> those are the types of photo ops that are fun, right? Because celebrities get into it, like in 2019. Jess is hugging up on David Tennant, and I'm, I got my hands like, huh? What is this? You know, it's those fun things. Now it's plexiglass. Yeah. And like the, the cast of Star Trek Discovery, they did a big group photo op for $250. Mm-hmm. And when we were in line for Sonequa Martin Green, who plays Captain Michael Burnham on Discovery, when she, there was a lady in front of us who had that cast photo op. She's standing off to the side, like all on her own, half of the photo. And the rest of the cast is all bunched up together, like playing like they're leaning against the plexiglass. It was the most awkward looking yeah. thing. And I'm like, there's no way I would have dished out 250 bucks for that. Right. Absolutely no way. So until that's gone, until that plexiglass is no more, I'm, I'm putting a moratorium on our celebrity photo ops like that. It's yeah. just. Because you, if you're going to pay, and I agree with him completely, you know, that's one thing that as. I've learned with the photo ops I've had a pleasure of being a part of in the past is that 
It's like Brock says, you can get that celebrity and the two of you can kind of come up with something, you know, fun to do for the photo. And it's also another way of, you know, as crazy as it, you know, it sounds as you're getting close with some that opportunity to get close with that celebrity and have that moment. You know, if you're going to pay for that and have the photo, you want the full experience. Yeah. And that plexiglass yeah. is, is causing a barrier right now that yes. I don't want. I'd rather just hold off on. <laughs> yeah, I've got so many great photos. Mm -hmm. uh, with, with so many celebrities that are creative and fun yeah, and you just can't be without plexiglass. So, uh, you know, and, and at the table, I guess is, is the celebrity's discretion. Like we, we went to go meet Anthony Rapp mm -hmm. who's on Star Trek discovery and just wanted to go get a selfie with him. He came out from behind. Now we're all wearing our face masks, yeah. but he came out from behind his plexiglass stood with us in front of his table and he held just his phone and took the pictures, mm -hmm. you know, the selfies with us. That was fantastic. Yeah. You know, and stood there and talked with us and, yeah. and everything. So, yeah. That's but as far as the celebrity photo ops, like you know, the group that does Dragon Con's photos, Epic Photo Ops, fantastic mm -hmm. guys. They, yeah. they are incredible photographers. They are great. I, I, I want to use them. But until that plexiglass is gone. Yeah. I'm not going to do it. But. And I, you know, and I get it. It's just that's the world we're living in right now. And. You know, I'm not say I'm not discouraging anybody from doing that if they, if they want to. But for us, it it's, a per weird. it's a personal choice that we're just we're not really happy with right now. And but but speaking of of uh, Sonequa and the, the celebrity experience, mm -hmm. Sonequa Martin Green is is an Alabama girl. You know, she was she was on The Walking Dead, mm -hmm. and she was very recently too in Space Jam, and yeah. uh, and. She's on Star Trek Discovery now. Yep. She is the lead, mm -hmm. lead character in, in Star Trek Discovery. She's an Alabama girl. She's from Russellville. And she and I were in college at the exact same time at the University of Alabama. Uh, I was a senior when she was a freshman. And so we walked up to her. She, this is the only autograph that I got the entire weekend. We walked up to her and uh, I picked out the picture I wanted to for her to sign. And we got to talking. You know, hey, love the show and everything else, but hey, roll tide. <laughs> and she goes, what? <laughs> Her face just lit up. Yeah. I'm like, you're a Bama alum. I'm a Bama alum. We were there at the exact same time. She goes, when were you there? I said, I graduated in 04. And she goes, I was there in 07. I said, yeah. I said, we missed each other by three years in college. <laughs> and so- and so we just got talking back and forth about the Alabama connection and I, and on my picture, which I don't mind this at all, you know, she signed two Brocks and equal Martin Green, Captain Burnham. And then right on the other side of the picture, she just wrote out a big roll tide roll. And I'm like, thank you. That's the experience I want. I want that one on one and being able to tie that into an Alabama connection mm -hmm. is, is worth everything. So yeah, that's the only thing I got left to say about celebrity stuff at Dragon Con. So if you guys want to hit on anything else, go right ahead. I met Fred Tascatore. I, I don't. I, I can't. I always pronounce his name correctly or not. I got a couple things signed <laughs> by him. Uh, of course, I have heard his voice acting. He's in one of my favorite game series in Gears of War. He is uh, Baird, the mechanic character, which is uh, he's a great smart aleck character. He does that. He voices a character uh, Nikolai in the Call of Duty zombie franchise. Mm -hmm. Got with him, but also I, I completely forgot he was there, and I got to talk to him for a couple minutes. But I forgot Jim Cummings was there. So I talked to him for a few minutes. I had to get a Darkwing yeah. Duck. Like I know he's more many more iconic characters he's voiced, but Darkwing Duck was like his. He that's his top tier for me. Yeah. So that was uh, getting to hear him talk. That of course he's he's signing it. He's reading it in the DW voice as he's signing it. So that was a very good thing. He was another big part of my Saturday morning <laughs> indulgements as a preteen because I, I mean I watched Saturday morning cartoons until it didn't become a thing anymore. But you know, right. <laughs> but that was my my uh, celebrity guest meeting wise. I mean, I wasn't. Well, I, mean, photo I, I mean, guys, I didn't go, so I really can't. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. Kid. Was, you were there. Gonna, you, you were, were there in, in our hearts. You were there exactly. for sure. <laughs> I was going to get a photo of DDP, but I for, re, didn't realize he was just there Saturday. And of course, I went Saturday evening and he was done for the day. So, yeah. Yeah. We walked over there with you. Like, oh. Yeah. Eh, it's all right. There are a lot of good artists in the artist alley this year. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Excellent artists. Yeah. That, that's a that's an area I tend to really enjoy more and more and more every year. And I've got so many prints that we, we've got to have a whole <laughs> wing of our new house <laughs> dedicated to art prints from Dragon Con. Yeah. <laughs> especially if we keep uh, keep running into James Mulligan uh, again. <laughs> yeah. Go, go look up art of, art of James Mulligan 
all over the socials and and look at this guy. He's a Disney artist, and every time we see him, we buy something. Yeah, he, <laughs> you know, like ah, okay, Jimmy, stop taking our money. Yeah, he's getting a he's getting a good bit of our support at cons. Yeah, so we we but we scaled back. We only we, we only did one. one. This year at Dragon Con. And it was Ariel in a pair of Mickey ears eating a Mickey Mouse ice cream bar in front of Epcot. Yeah. Had so. to have it. I mean, there was no question about it. That that one was going to be bought. I knew we were not walking away without that one. So, And then when we went to the the area, the the uh, downstairs in the Hyatt, the, the art room. Tell me the technical term of that. I'm sorry, because that was the first it's time the I art ex- exhibition. Okay, so that was the first time I had went to that area. But yeah, the the guy that worked for the WWF that we got to look yes. at those prints. Yeah, I can I think of his name? Tom he, Fleming. He, Tom Fleming. Yes. Tom, yep. Yes. Those were those were great prints, and well, he, he designed he designed the the very first Undertaker T-shirt. He designed the costume for Razor Ramon. Mm-hmm. Concept yep. art and all that yeah. for the WWE, the posters, the Royal Rumble posters and things like mm. that. That was that was a, a hate that I missed out on him that time, but uh, I did get the information. So maybe at some point down the line that we can. Yeah, we we'll definitely order something. From definitely him. get oh, yeah, something ordered from him for sure. But yeah, I mean, I I really don't have much else to to go on. I mean, yeah. I, I just figure at, I just Dragon Con this year was. Uh, was a success for me and I enjoyed mm-hmm. every bit of it and I'm glad that I was able to go. Yeah. Looking forward to, to next year. We, the, the three of us, and we got to get Kevin in on this. We, the three of yep. us already have all of our passes for next year. So that's taken care of. So we're all going next year. Attendance cap or not, please mm-hmm. cap it because low crowds <laughs> yeah. are wonderful. Well, I guys, I'm going to do my best next year. Um, I just had to reschedule the cruise that I had set up for November Again, um, mm-hmm. to next year. So, because the one this year, they've actually put a uh, the CDC issued a uh, advisory not to go to Belize, and that's one of the places oh. that um, my cruise was going. So gotcha. that kind of put the nail in the coffin. So mm-hmm. I uh, I went ahead and rescheduled that. So this will be the second time I've had to reschedule because of COVID. So I'm hoping um, I'll still be able to do Dragon Con and that together. I don't see why not. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully so. Yeah. Be good to get you. Get you back in the Dragon Con world again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, Alabama is getting gearing up. Getting gearing up. That's good English. <laughs> getting geared up. <laughs> getting geared up. I can grammar. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, Alabama is gearing up for Alabama Comic Con. That's going to be the second weekend in October. Uh, we should have another episode before that hits. Mm-hmm. But Judith Hogue, who we gushed over enough, uh, she's going to be there. Renee Jacobs, mm-hmm. who is the animated April O'Neil, will be there. Got things ready for both of them to sign. Mm-hmm. I've got an uh you know the cartoon April figure and I've also got the uh the live action Judith Hogue figure. Those are ready for those two ladies to sign. Sting's going to be there, Booker T. Mm-hmm. Uh that's going to be happening at the uh, the BJCC, the Birmingham Jefferson Convention Center, whatever it is. You, you, well, the, it, it's going to be in the exhibition hall, I think is where it's going right. to be not the arena. The arena is still under ring. Yeah, it's so weird. Like we used to talk about with the guests they're having, I'm actually going to spend more money for guests at, at Alabama Comic Con than I did at Dragon Con. Yeah, probably <laughs> mostly yes, for me. For, most mostly for me for wrestling, like Sting, Booker T, and of course now with the, me being our the big AEW fan, the Doctor Britt Baker oh, DMD. Yeah. Which I got to tell you, oh, while is she going to be about, there? Yep. Yeah, she just got announced last her. week. Oh, okay. Hey, all right, you guys looking at me, I've already got me a last minute costume I need to do. But since she's had this big long running gag that the great commentator Tony Schiavone has always been her best friend. And like uh, he's done a lot of interviews with her. Well, I think I think if I can I can pay I just need to get me a blazer and AEW uh uh patch to put on the blazer and a pair of black glasses. Oh. I think I may have to do my photo with her as Tony Schiavone. Oh, well, that, that'd be funny. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Which is great. They just signed her boyfriend to the company at Adam mm-hmm. Cole, and now they're mm-hmm. having a big running thing where he's, he's getting after her because he's always a good friend of his 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 his, his lady. So I'm okay, sure <laughs> that's going to be fun. That was one thing. But overall, like I said, the people that run Alabama Comic Con, they've always been nice. Like mm-hmm. I said, when I initiated a contact with them when we started trying to get the Ghostbusters there, they were you know very welcoming of having fan groups be there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, it's 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 really well done. Like it's, it's it's still so so weird to me now. It used to be, you know, we did good to get one upstart convention to happen in Alabama. Now we're having multiple ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Good ones too. Yeah, they, like I said, these are very very well run and 
all, especially all, all the conventions in the Birmingham area are, have been fantastic the last few years. Mm-hmm. Very Which is great. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm very happy to live in the area now because now I don't have to yeah. drive two hours <laughs> to come to them. I can just go down the street 15 minutes. I'm there. Yeah. Yeah. So Alabama Comic Con, if you're listening to that and, and within the Birmingham area uh, before the second weekend in October, stop on by. The Alabama mm-hmm. Ghostbusters will be there. So we'll all be there in our flight suits. Not sure if we're going to be there all, uh, if Jess and I are going to be there all weekend or maybe mm-hmm. just Saturday. We don't know yet. Yeah. But uh, the Alabama Ghostbusters will have a table there, uh, thankfully uh, arranged by our, our friend and, and member Brian Maddox. So uh, he and Shane and uh, Leanne and a lot of other friends of ours will all be at the uh, the table at some point in time. So come by and say mm-hmm. hi to Maybe one day we'll start applying to go to cons as the Bama Geeks and having our table and podcast and stuff. You know, if we can. You Maybe. Know, we get, Who knows, right? We get, we get the press badges. Hey, <laughs> get, 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 yeah, exactly. Get the press passes and, hey. yeah, you, know, you know, help us grow the audience so we can, maybe we can make all this happen. You know, send everybody to Bama Geeks on social media at Bama Geeks. Okay. So. <laughs> 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 well, that's a transition. Um, Speaking of Ghostbusters, there we go. How about that? Yeah. Let's transition into afterlife talk. Yeah. So some afterlife stuff has happened in the past month that we've been away. Uh, It has been moved to November 19th from November 11th. And uh, they moved it from Veterans Day to a week later. And that's because uh, Top Gun Maverick, uh, they rescheduled theirs to what, January or sometime next year, their release. And so... Ghostbusters Afterlife is actually taking the spot for Mm -hmm. Top Gun Maverick, which means more theaters, more IMAX. Yes. Mm -hmm. To see Ghostbusters Afterlife. Heck yes. Give me that IMAX Afterlife. Give it to me as much as possible. Plus, won't it let it lead into Thanksgiving? That'll be leading into the Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving week, too. Yeah. Yeah. This is a very good spot for Afterlife. Yeah. So. Jess and I, we have AMC A list where we get the three movies a week for like twenty bucks a month, <laughs> and I guarantee you that week all three of our movies will be Ghostbusters Afterlife. There's yep. no room for anything else that week. I'm going to see that in IMAX as much as possible. Probably Thanksgiving week too. We'll we'll have to take <laughs> our kids. You know, well, that, oh. <laughs> go ahead. I would say for me that was the movie I like back before everything hit and everything got postponed. That was going to be the movie that I signed up for a list for because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I had been talking about doing it for a while. But that was that was going to be the one, and that's what I still plan to do. I probably first of November I'm going to finally sign up for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it it will be worth it, especially so if you it. can cash in as much IMAX showings as possible. Mm-hmm. It it will have paid for itself. Yeah, double paid for itself. <laughs> yeah, a list is so worth it. It's. I, I really I, I keep crossing fingers that movies keep coming, keep coming, mm-hmm. keep growing, keep the theaters in business, keep AMC in business because we really like A list. Yeah, we, we've we've got IMAX twenty minutes from our house, and please keep <laughs> keep it alive. Support right. them. It's been great getting back to the movies and seeing movies again. Yeah. It really has been. So For I sure. hope that uh, all this is just the the upward trend of all that coming back to normal. Yep, and uh, there was a. A couple of weeks ago, there was a kind of a convention, Cinema CinemaCon. Mm-hmm. Is, is mm-hmm. that is that the correct name? I believe so. Yeah, uh, yeah, close to it. Yeah, it's a bunch <laughs> of movie theater owners got together, and uh, Jason and Ivan Reitman sprung the entire movie on them. You know, yep. said, "Please don't give away anything, your theater owners. You know how bad it is to spoil, mm-hmm. or how unfun it is to spoil." So here's the entire movie. So there has been an audience viewing of Ghostbusters Afterlife and apparently uh, got a lot of kudos yeah. from the theater owners and the critics who have seen it. And so this is this is the Ghostbusters movie, it sounds like, that we've been waiting for. Right. And uh, they, they're also going to have a panel at uh, New York City Comic Con, mm-hmm. NYCC. Uh, that's coming up in October. And none of us are going. I have zero desire to go to New York anytime soon. Uh, I want to go. I just can't afford <laughs> well, that too. Yeah. But uh, so uh, I'm going to point you over to our good friends 
Craig, Abby, and Jake over at uh, Yes Have Some Podcast, mm-hmm. YHS Podcast. Uh, look them up. They're go- they're Those three guys are going. They're in. They're going. They're going. They've got their passes and everything, and they're going to be uh, doing some coverage of the Ghostbusters Afterlife panel uh, and stuff. So please go visit our really good friends at, at YHS Podcast and uh, and get their coverage of it. They always do a great job with everything they mm-hmm. do. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. You you won't be disappointed with what they have to offer you. I'm really excited that they're getting that opportunity to go up there and and, mm-hmm. and do that. So yep. best of luck to them and have fun, guys. Yep. Hopefully there's gonna be some new Ghostbusters toy reveals out of there too, somewhere, I hope. Yeah. Well, and I'm I'm I think the the biggest thing that I'm excited of uh from the afterlife or things that are coming out is the potential popcorn bucket. The Ecto yeah. popcorn bucket. Yeah, the, the, oh, that looks awesome. Yes, yeah, I was going to say, please tell me y'all have seen that. I am so excited about this popcorn I, bucket. I'm. You're excited about popcorn no matter what. Uh, well, I know. And can you, I um, could possibly have an Ecto to eat it out of. This is exciting. <laughs> it's Ghostbusters and it's popcorn. I, I mean, mean, that's it, like right up Jessica's alley. I, you cannot get any better than that. I'm serious. My, I, my biggest objection on is the price tag on that thing. And it going to be like. 80 bucks. What, what, what? I or, don't, I'm, uh, 60, I haven't seen the was, price it, on it. Yeah, the price tag. Let's see. I will look at what I think, but it was going to be a little pricey, I believe. Are we about to drop 160 bucks on two popcorn buckets? I think, I think we're going to be barging some popcorn buckets. I mean, I am doing a Brock, quick check. Don't I'm, judge. I'm going to hope. Oh, no, I'm not judging. This is, this, no, this, this is the woman who, who lets me buy board games. I got, <laughs> that's I, why, this there is nothing. you go. Yeah. <laughs> I could say something, but I think I. Mm. <laughs> what can you say about mm. what? You, I, there's so much stuff you can say. <laughs> Let's see the package that came what last week that you've been it? waiting months on that uh, uh, oh. you were, had major concerns that if if it was going to arrive and oh yeah, okay that. this is totally are we going to go here and get totally yeah. off afterlife talk well I mean, well, well Bo is looking yeah. up the price so while I'm Bo, trying to see I, I remember seeing it on Ghostbusters news which I'm giving my plug here for him yeah, but I think the, but I think the Ecto has lights if I'm not mistaken but anyway so okay so yeah she gets a complete pass on popcorn buckets yes at least two of them. If they're that much, that's totally fine. Because last week I got a, I got a grail of an autograph, the grail of a grail of a grail autograph for me. It's my number one has always been Jody Benson. And now mm-hmm. I've met her. I've got like five different things signed by her. Jody was my, my top bucket list item. Number two on my list is an autograph I got in the mail uh, from official picks, official picks.com. Those guys are awesome. Check those guys out. Well, we're just plugging everybody tonight, <laughs> but for good reason, for good reason. Very good reason. They've been doing a lot, you know, a lot of celebrities in order to make up their income from, you know, that they've lost from missing conventions and stuff over the past year. They've been doing private signings, a ton people you never thought would do private signings. I mean, like Sylvester Stallone and Michael Keaton and all these, these huge names doing private signings. Even Robert Downey Jr. is now doing a private signing. Uh, it's expensive, <laughs> but it's a private signed item witnessed and authenticated and everything else uh, of Robert Downey Jr. I digress. You know, I've got one Chris Evans as Captain America on a metallic print. Love it. Well, my second bucket list item is Elizabeth Olsen. I love Scarlet Witch. She's my favorite Avenger. Mm -hmm. She's my favorite Marvel character just because of Elizabeth Olsen. Yeah. I'm sorry for all you comic book guys that are disappointed in me saying that, that I didn't get it from the comic book. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't keep, I kept up with DC more than Marvel in comic books growing up, but Elizabeth Olsen is my celebrity crush. So official picks did a signing with her and Paul Bettany, you know, and so I've got now an 11 by 14, picture that says to Brock Lizzie Olson <laughs> of her as Scarlet Witch. And I just I, I get happy every time I see that. He gets a really big smile on his yes, face. Yes, I do. But also they sent in that same package an eleven by fourteen of Vicky Vale and Jack Nicholson the Joker up in, you know, the 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 bell tower. And it's signed. I've already got Jack Nicholson from like 21 years ago on an eight by 10 as the Joker. 
you're not going to get Jack Nicholson these days. No. He's just he's he's up in age, and I think he's got dementia. You're, mm-hmm. you're not going to get him on the on the signing, so I'm not going to get him on this picture. But I did get uh, also from official picks. They did a private signing with Kim Basinger, and so I've got the 11 by 14 and Vicky Vale uh, and the Joker signed says, to Brock Love with a big heart. Love Kim Basinger on it. Yep. So okay. So I got zero room to say anything <laughs> about eighty dollar popcorn buckets. If that's what they cost. If Bo, do you have an answer? I, I want. I'm, I'm looking. I'm still looking. I want to say it was like it was like sixty nine. I want to say sixty nine. I thought I heard fifty. Yeah, I, but, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Okay. But still, though, I mean, it's pricey. But still, though, it's really cool. So yeah. that's you know, that's the Jess is a popcorn addict. For for those that don't know her, this woman. We'll get the big bucket at AMC. Mm-hmm. She'll sit there, eat the whole thing, go back and get a refill, bring it home. And that's yeah. her snack for the next week. You better believe it. She is a popcorn fanatic. I cherish that movie theater popcorn like you would not believe. It is gold. And then this past weekend when we've got my kids, my son comes in and says, I didn't get any popcorn at the theater. So what does he <laughs> and my daughter do? They demolish the popcorn bucket. And Jess is just trying to keep up going, save it, please. <laughs> Don't take my popcorn. You know. uh, I hate to be so greedy, but <laughs> you know it's 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 my vice, it's my love, it's my number one snack. Yeah, so I don't know where I can't find it, but I I know like I said it was that was something like I want to say that was around then. I sure. I thought I heard of I I was gonna say I thought I heard fifty dollars, but it could be wrong. So. Either way, she's getting. I'm getting. Oh yeah, one. Well, yeah. The, the, she's the getting two. Yeah. I, I hope that we get lucky enough that the AMC is going to have it. So it's an AMC exclusive. Well, yep. yeah. So I'm hoping that our theater gets in on that exclusive. We've been keeping. We our, will find an AMC theater that has them if we have to. Look, we we've been keeping our AMC in business. Oh yeah. Since since we felt comfortable going back to the movies. So. Mm-hmm. They owe it to us, <laughs> especially after, especially after this past weekend, yes. which we're going to get to in a second. Yeah, um, yeah, but I, I guess to back on to the afterlife talk, um, just some of the things that have been coming out. Now we've got the. Uh, can we talk about Target? <laughs> yes. Let's talk about Target. Target apparently, people. Uh, there's a Ghostbuster section now in Target in the in the Halloween costumes. Uh, apparently. Every target that you go to and see these <laughs> displays, they've got mannequins wearing the flight suits and wearing inflatable proton packs. Except every time we see them online, the proton packs are upside down. The cyclotron's on top. <laughs> and I, I guess, I don't know if this is a, a nationwide mandate to incorrectly display proton packs, but we were in Target uh, in Hoover uh, after the movies yesterday. And... Uh, I I saw it and it just my OCD kicked in and I'm in the middle of Target taking proton packs off the mannequins and straighten them up. He could not walk away from it. Couldn't do it. Mm-mm. Had to be fixed. And so you're welcome, Hoover Target. <laughs> and if I go back and those things are upside down again, you owe me a consulting fee. <laughs> Personally, I blame Ruby's. They were the one that started it years ago. <laughs> yeah, with the, they had the the picture of the 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 blonde haired model. Wearing yep. like a small proton pack backpack. She was wearing it upside down. Mm. Yep. And no, stop. Cyclotron, <laughs> the thing with the four red lights that's round the, goes on. The, the only bottom. thing I can it's get it to the uninitiated is because the cyclotron is rounded. And of course, everyone always automatically assumes the proton pack is a jet pack. I'm assuming they want to assume the rounded <laughs> part should be the top. <laughs> that's just me. You that, know, that's stab your, in the dark there. That's your take on it? Yeah. We, I just or I'm wondering if just, you know, if it's just something that like people taking the heads off the LeBron James figures, or are they just going mm. in and just turning proton packs upside down? I, I, I don't know. But I, I spent a couple of minutes and I fixed Hoover yes, Target's did. display to be <laughs> accurate. <laughs> and they probably watched me on the security cameras going, what's this, what's this guy doing to our mannequins? Well, it and not to get off the subject too much, but I remember when the first time I watched uh, Zombie Land with you and the you know the scene with the oh, with, with Bill Woody? Murray and Woody Harrelson and you talking about the inaccuracies of the of the pack. But anyway, the hose does not come out of the pack <laughs> at the top. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Z- Zombie Land. As much as I love that movie, they really irked me seeing that proton pack when Woody Harrelson was wearing it. See, it sets off his OCD. Mm-hmm. These, <laughs> these little things. He's 
He's a uh, he's definitely one for the details well, and the OCD. So well, anybody who's built a proton pack, that movie will bother them. And Casper, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Ray Stance comes out a with a mustache, <laughs> b with a broken barrel tube on it. Yeah, the the end of the proton one, the neutrona one, is swinging back and forth as he's running. I'm like, <laughs> come on, Dan, this is your stuff. You created yeah. Ghostbusters. What are you doing? Positron glider. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but but target uh make make sure the round part of the proton packs are at the bottom of those there you go. i will or go else some. or round or, goes or, down <laughs> round goes down that's the second t-shirt idea <laughs> 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 bo you just you're, you're you're providing a revenue stream tonight <laughs> um <laughs> But, uh, you know, with, with Ghostbusters, yeah, I'm hoping with, with New York Comic Con, like I said earlier, I hope we got some new toy reveals. The Plasma Series figures for the new for the new movie looks really good. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yep. They, they look really good. I've got all of them except for Ray. I'm looking for Ray. Yeah. So I've, I've got all the other ones that. Um, you got the kids also? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wound up getting all of them. And. and- I- and for some That's reason, wave. for whatever reason, we still don't have Phoebe's yet. But I still think know. hers has a giant spoiler tied That's to it. Yeah, That's, the only thing. That's the only explanation. But their Fright Features figures have now been revealed. Yeah. Yeah, all the, all the kids' Fright Features figures. Well, I mean, like I think her pack-in may come with something that's spoilerish. That's maybe. true. Mm-hmm. Or something on the on the back of the box. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm not reading any of the boxes regardless until I, have. I see just, the movie. Just because I bought them, I read them. They're not terribly spoilerish. Okay. But they do give a clue. As yeah, there's to, a couple of things you're like, oh, that would have been kind of cool to yeah. see that. But I mean, it's nothing nothing. It's nothing major. earth-shattering. I still, I still feel like I've seen too much already, even from the trailers. So I don't want to read the boxes. So okay. if y'all read the boxes, cool. Well, but don't, don't go into the other bedroom back there because that's I'm, where they're hiding. I'm not. I will not. I, I will. I will not read the back of the boxes. She was looking for a Ray the other day when she went down to Target to have her nails done. Well, she, the 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 salon outside of Target. She does yeah. not get her tit nails done at Target. <laughs> um, <laughs> but she was looking for a Ray for me. She's like, nope, no Ray, and it's okay. Mm-hmm. Well, just don't read the back of the box when you find him. You don't want to know what Ray say. That's right. No, no. what Ray say? No, nay, nay. No, no. I know that Ray say we closed, but exactly. We closed. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted salt lamps. We closed. Yes. <laughs> we closed. <laughs> yeah, but, ah. but yeah, uh, well, jumping from that back to uh, back to the the movie theater talk, uh, oh, yeah. Shang Chi has been uh, has been a beautiful thing for Marvel. Yes, uh, Jess and I saw it. It came out when we were at Dragon Con, mm-hmm. so we waited until the week after. Uh, when we got back from Dragon Con and from a work conference that I had elsewhere in the state, we got back and watched it. Thankfully, still in IMAX. It was mm-hmm. still in IMAX this weekend. Yeah. So three weeks in a row, it's been in IMAX. And we're not giving anything away at all. It's, the only thing I'm going to say about Shang-Chi is see it. Mm-hmm. This has become a top tier Marvel movie for me. It yeah. is gorgeous. It is fun. The action is great. Uh, did I say it's gorgeous? If you get a chance mm-hmm. to see this in the theater, especially a bigger screen like IMAX, I hope you do because the colors pop. Yeah. Especially the second half of the movie. The color is it, beautiful. It really is. Shot very well for IMAX and, mm-hmm. and uh, excellent action scenes. Like I said, we don't want to, Kevin and Bo haven't seen it. And then mm-hmm. Bo's like, well, you know, I don't get, but still, no, we're no, not going to, we're not going to spoil anything. Kevin will disown us. <laughs> so I'm not going to do that to him. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we, me and Brock, we went in with really, you know, just kind of like, okay, well, you know, it's it's Marvel and we need to, you know, this is the next wave we're going into in the, the phase. The figures so. were already on clearance at Target when by the time the movie came out. And I, I noticed that the prices uh, went back up on the figures after the movie came out. <laughs> and Well, deservingly. Yeah. Deservedly. Yeah. The movie's great. Yeah. Uh, Shang-Chi is fan flipping tastic. Yeah. Aquafina just she's she, she's fun. She's she, a lot of fun. She in this brings movie. so much to this movie. Uh, great character for her. I told him, I said that I'm you know, this was a great kickoff, I think, for this next wave, this next phase that we're going into with Marvel. And he's going to he's going to probably carry a, a good bit to this next phase too. bring it coming into this yeah. next phase. Deservedly. And, he's fan. Of, Shim, I don't want to mispronounce his name. Shang-Chi. No, no, no. Not the character, the actor. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Shim Liu. 
Is that? So? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Close enough. <laughs> he Apparently, he originally got his start as a stock photo model. Yes. There's a lot of like high stock <laughs> photos, like where he's one of the, the people in it. Apparently, that's where he got his start. Yeah. Uh, somebody take pictures of me. I want to get in on this gig. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what was fun is like I know that a lot of people were like, well, not many people. Like so I just know a couple of people were for naysaying, and a lot of it was like his his reply on social media was a lot of those like his stock photos, which were hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go back there and look. Oh, I'd find that. Yeah, I follow him on Twitter, but I hadn't yeah. hadn't been on there a lot lately. Yeah, but he's he is a great addition to the yeah. to this next phase of Marvel. So very Jeez. exciting, and and, and a great character. You know, and then and then the telling, you know, of course, past the of course, you know, stay for the credits. Don't leave because yeah, they're all the way to the end, all the way to the end. Stay all the way to the end, of course. And, and like our and, and like my kids, here's the story we were going. With <laughs> oh, <earlier>. yeah. <laughs> my kids, they they don't go see Marvel movies unless they're with us. Uh, that's just kind of or they don't go to the movies a lot unless they're with us. That's yeah. just kind of our thing. That's what we do with them. Uh, we We got them into IMAX last night. Uh, down in Hoover and we're watching the movie. It gets to the middle of the movie where things are really about to mm-hmm. pick up. And then all of a sudden, boo, <laughs> and emergency lights come on. Everything okay. goes dead. It's like power is out. Great. So we sat in there for a few minutes and uh, they eventually all the, the theater workers came in and were like, Hey, uh, it's going to be like four hours until <laughs> we're going to get that we're anticipating getting power back. So we're going to have to ask you guys to leave. <laughs> so my kids have seen half of Shang-Chi mm-hmm. and this is where I was going to go at the beginning of the, the episode talking about Disney plus. Was it just AMC that struck the deal with Disney plus, or it was it all, a bunch of theater chains that, that struck the deal with, with Disney plus that there would be a 45 day wait mm-hmm. instead of instantaneous streaming at the same time for the premiere price on Disney plus. Yeah. Now Disney Plus has to wait 45 days. They started that with (laughs) Shang-Chi. And so now my kids, I have to wait another two weeks to get them back here to try to get them to the theater again, which thankfully (laughs) the AMC people did give us free passes. So we got four free tickets to to come back into the movie. Uh, But I've got to wait two weeks before my kids <laughs> potentially get to see this again. Of course, my daughter said, well, I'm just going to go with my friends. And I said, what about your brother? She goes, I'm leaving him behind. Yeah, he's, <laughs> not, he's not invited. Yeah, my, <laughs> my son is not invited because he's not a teenager yet. Um, <laughs> and my daughter's like, I can't come with our friends. I can't hang out with my brother. That's yeah. crazy. So I don't know. My daughter may see it. My son, I'm going to have to take him back because I he now he's being left hanging. Yeah, and it was getting to the good part, and he was laughing. It was like, "Oh, this is great!" I'm and well. while you know, it's like we kept talking about, well, we can't really be mad at them for that happening. It's totally out of the control. But dang it, I don't have closure. I don't have. I don't have. Uh, you know, I feel like I just got cheated or something. Yeah. But yeah. Je- Jess and I know what's going to happen. We've seen it. Mm-hmm. My kids, I'm, I feel bad for my kids <laughs> because it's so good. Have you ever had that happen before in the movie no. theater? Lose power? First time Mm-mm. in my life. I've, I've, I've only had it happen to one time, and it was when I saw Dumb and Dumber. The <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dumb and Dumber doesn't have as great of implications. To no, 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 no. Not, you know, the, yeah. I'm just saying that's the only time it ever happened to me. So. Yeah. And of course, I did ask the question on the way out. Um, hey, can I? Can I get another refill on the popcorn? Oh, she left her purse in the theater. Yeah. And she goes, I've got to go back in and get it. She had plenty of time to run in and grab her purse and come out. My kids and I are standing outside going, what is taking so long? We look back through the windows. There she's are. over there at the counter. Please fill my popcorn bucket. I mean, they're if they don't open back up, they were just going to throw it away. So, and there I, you go. And I get a free <laughs> refill with the bucket. So yeah, She was know. being helpful. That's right. I'm just trying to, you know, what are you going to do? Throw it away later? Just go ahead and fill my bucket up. <laughs> well, we don't know if it's, I don't care that it's not hot. I'm taking it home. I will eat some of it tomorrow. It's okay. Yeah. It, Can, uh, yeah. If I can't finish the movie, please give me my my free refill. So. I'll finish it tomorrow. Famous last words with my kids in the house. Yeah, that didn't last. <laughs> we got home later, watched a movie, and the rest yeah. of it was gone. So. We, we watched Guardians of the Galaxy 2 to, to try to make up for it and calm their nerves. <laughs> so, Y'all got anything else you want to talk about? I'm done. Yep. <laughs> uh, the only thing I could talk of, like the other big thing that happens, is where it was uh, Norm McDonald's passing. Oh yeah, oh, yes, please, yeah. Let's, wow, let's that, that talk was about a, that. That that caught. I mean, naturally, because both he and 
uh, Chadwick Boseman kept mm-hmm. a secret. Mm-hmm. That that caught me off guard. Yeah. Well, like even Chadwick right. Boseman kept a while. Uh, I mean, he kept his almost nearly a decade secret. I mean, nine years he was fighting. Norm for nine did, years. right? Yeah. Yeah. Norm did. Yeah. Which, like I said, I, I, you're probably, you know, if you're probably under the age of 25, you may know Norm, might or not. But like, like folks 25 up, you know, we remember from his SNL days. Mm-hmm. And, he did a couple of movies, but he was in a bit. He usually was always like the, the, from what he always was, he was the comedian's comedian. Yeah. Yeah. Like his comedian, some of his jokes we can't cover because they're very blue. So, <laughs> and the thing is, is if he told a bad joke, he dug in and went with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was like, okay, you guys aren't laughing at this. I'm writing this out. And he would make it yeah. so bad to the point you would laugh just from being uncomfortable. Yeah. Norm was the greatest. He was, that was, that was I, a real shocker. For. Like some of the things what I've loved about was seeing everybody I knew that enjoyed him just as much as I did what was great. But then like I've seen a couple of threads on Reddit. They were all talking about uh, some of his jokes. These are not this is not a you know bad joke. But he always talked about which was weird. Like I want to say interview probably 10 or 12 years ago. He kind of foreshadowed, I guess, you know, talking about dealing with cancer. You know, he was mm-hmm. which this was his t- out t- outtake on it, and which I kind of I kind of like it because it gives it a little positive spin when he was talking about. He, uh, he was uh, he was talking about dealing with it, you know, when you, somebody lost their battle and he's like, technically, no, because, you know, things happen. You know, it's I'm trying to think about I'm trying to word it right where like, it was just it was a, it was a positive outlook, but he didn't mean to. He tried to make it a joke, you know, with him being a joke, him. Yeah. But that but the, the other thing that got me a good laugh was talking about he goes, well, you know, you know, I may have lost. You know, he he says. Said so no matter what happened to me, you go at least I know it wasn't OJ Simpson that did it. Oh man, that's what I, <laughs> his his Disarm. OJ's oh his OJ stuff from Saturday Night Live is classic. That's what and got him fired. That's what got him yep. fired. Yeah, he wouldn't yep. stop. He with would OJ not Simpson. let up. And, and I, that's the other good thing about it. He he was a man of his principle. You know, he even whether you agreed with him or not, you know, he stayed on it. Yeah, he definitely uh, did. Oh, uh, when well, I remember when the OJ verdict was read, and he just he appears on Weekend Update and goes, well. Murder is now legal, legal in the state of California. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a whole um, there's a YouTube video out there with nothing but everything that he did. OJ Simpson. And it's like an hour long. Update. Mm-hmm. Yes. So yeah, and it was all weekend update stuff. And that's mm-hmm. where Lauren Michaels just went. Now you're, you're we're done. <laughs> that's yeah. pretty big. Yeah. And if you know, of course we we have to we have to acknowledge the Burt Reynolds stuff. I mean, that's oh, oh yeah. all the Saturday Night Live. Yes, oh, yeah. Yeah. Burt Reynolds. Hands down. I mean, it's it's just he was he was the best. He was definitely the best at doing Burt Reynolds. And I always enjoy going back and watching those. I can never get enough of Burt Ferguson. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's not my name. (laughs) Excuse me. Turd Ferguson. It's a funny name. Yeah. Funny name. (laughs) <laughs> got a big hat <laughs> yeah the big the big where did you hat. get the hat <laughs> <laughs> and what's this we're all friends with him and i know he doesn't listen to me either way but y'all have to admit to me does nicks not look like norm mcdonald the older he gets uh you know you're not far off from that <laughs> wow. well, not now since he's grew the beard but you know <laughs> he'll shave it eventually <laughs> yeah and now this will be the one episode he listens to, and he's going to come. Yeah, of after course. You. <laughs> he hasn't threatened my life in a couple of years, so I'm doing one. Really? I got it just last week. <laughs> well, I say you, you eat lunch with him regularly, though, yeah, yeah, so you know. Yeah, you got to come back out with us for lunch soon. <laughs> oh wow. Oh, and, the, and uh, my last thing on Norm is uh, I really enjoyed seeing everybody's posts mm-hmm. uh, after mm-hmm. he died, and they were all this is the greatest Norm McDonald joke. And they were all completely different jokes. Everybody's yeah. got their favorite best Norm McDonald joke. And he's got so many of them. It just, it spanned yeah. so many, so, you know, so many thoughts. Mm-hmm. I was actually really happy to see that he had finished um, doing all of his voice work and his recordings for the third season of the Orville. Um, Cause he actually has a character. It's mm-hmm. one of his later works, but it's a, a character on the uh, that sci-fi series, the Orville. Yeah. The, the I've one. heard that yeah. he was doing that. Oh, wow. Yeah. He has a character, a little, little slime ball looking guy named Yahbit. And um, it's, uh, he's he's I mean it, it's it's very obvious Norm McDonald. As soon as he starts talking, it's like he doesn't try to change his oh, voice. Yeah. <laughs> they obviously wanted Norm McDonald for this part, and I don't know what they're going to do with the character next season. You know, uh, season three just wrapped. So, but he did he he did finish up all of his voice recordings for that. So. I didn't know he was on. The, I've only seen a handful of episodes of the Orville and love it. I just I've just got to go back and do it like with some of yeah. the other shows. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know he was on there. Yeah. 
Yeah, as soon as you see the character and he talks, you're like, oh, yeah, there he is. <laughs> yeah. Well, now I've got more of a reason to go watch it. Mm-hmm. All right. It's a good series. Yeah. I had started on it. I had started watching it. Well, so. I will tell you, if we talk about it for just a second, the Orville is it is very Seth MacFarlane in the first season where it's he's trying to be comedic with it. But then they really start bringing in um, uh, they uh, Jonathan Frakes. Uh, he he directs quite a few episodes of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's very mm-hmm. it, so basically in season one when it gets toward the end of season one they start finding their footing and it starts becoming more of a Star Trek because you know yeah. in Star Trek um, the whole transporter thing was put in as as something to save on budget so they didn't always constantly have to be doing CG of them going down to planets and stuff. Well, in in Orville. They never did that. So they actually go to planets like they get in a, a craft and go down to planets. So it's I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a different um, it's a different universe altogether. But in the end, it's uh, it, it, it really it, if you're looking for Star Trek Next Generation, it scratches that itch. It really okay. does. Yeah, yep. I had heard that by, by the second season. It feels more like next gen. I would say toward the end of the first season, okay. um, it, it starts off as kind of like. The captain and his his uh, f- former girlfriend, and then they they find, wind up being together and and on the same ship, and then you find and it's and it kind of feels kind of like a drama, but then they start figuring out people don't like that, and then they start switching over to getting more in the groove of being more like Star Trek Next Generation, and it's so good. Okay, they tackle social issues like you would expect. It yeah, it's yeah. yeah. I can, I really can't recommend it any higher. It's a great series. All right. Well, we'll definitely have it on our list again. <laughs> and if anybody else is listening out there and you haven't seen the Orville, give it a shot. Just look at a trailer from season two. It's good. And, and just watch through season one so you know the characters. Yeah. And then season two, it'll 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 rock you. It's 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 fantastic. Yeah. All right. Very nice. Well, any uh any other thoughts or anything before we wrap this one up? Mm. I don't know. I think well, I, I think that's it. I think I am good here on my end. Okay. Well, that is episode 14 in the can, as they used to say in the old days. And <laughs> that 30 years ago. 30, yeah. 30 years. <laughs> sorry. That's, <laughs> that's a me and Brock thing. I'm sorry. It's a, it, there's a, <laughs> James Spann, a local weather guy, actually national. Weather legend, you mean. Legend. Yes. Exactly. Pardon me. Uh, James Spann, who who is an absolute weather legend out, out of Birmingham. Uh, does his his daily you know hour well every quarter hour weather update on local radio stations and I'm going I'm driving into work listening to one to uh, to one of the shows so every 15 minutes you know James Span Weather brought to you by and then there's a local car dealership that that is in the area that's sponsoring all of them and they say the name of the dealership and then several look at the community and it reminds it reminds me of trey parker from south park <laughs> trey parker has to be the one doing this voice because so and so is serving the community for over 30 years <laughs> you know he's got that he's got that trey parker 30 years <laughs> that's all that's <laughs> and so every so he sounds like a canadian basically yeah yeah, yeah. It, we're, we're sitting at the uh we went to the, the Birmingham Barons, which is the local Chicago White Sox double-A <laughs> affiliate here. We were at their final regular season game a week ago today, it's Sunday. And so we're, we're sitting in the in the crowd, and they're, they're introducing things, and, and a high school friend of mine is with us. And, and the, the 30 years is just stuck in my head. <laughs> and so every time they make a play, that's the first time he's made that play in 30 years. <laughs> and it just I ran it into the ground. I won't do that here, I promise. <laughs> But it sounds like Trey Parker. That's oh, us. I wish I was related to him and he'd give me a dollar once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, we'll yeah. be back sooner than 30 years. I promise. So that that's episode 14 of the Bama Geeks podcast. Once again, please hit us up at Bama Geeks on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and Bama Geeks at gmail.com. Send us a legitimate email, not a spam enlargement ad, please. We don't want that. Um, <sighs> <laughs> but we'd love to hear from you. And we appreciate the uh, all the, the listens and downloads that we've gotten so far. If you got one of those spam enlargement emails through Gmail's spam filters, that's pretty impressive. It is. <laughs> it is. You're actually, you're, you're right. I haven't seen one of those in ages. 
they they just disguise it, I guess, the, the verbiage or whatever, as a hey, we're a we're we'll give you a sponsorship opportunity. We'll enlarge your you know listeners, you know yeah. your your listenership. Mm. Yeah. Okay. It's a gradual increase over thirty years. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> guy <laughs> with that we're going to wrap it up you guys have a wonderful week wonderful couple of weeks and uh, we'll catch you on the next one catch you on the blippity flop oh my thanks guys <laughs> bye bye bye, bye.